Hello and welcome to the Mason Storm DIY audio channel. In this series of videos we will be making some hi-fi speakers. In this video, the third of the series, we will look at extracting FRD and ZMA files and using them in WinPCD for crossover design. Speaker data or crossover design consists mainly of two parts, the frequency response of the driver and the corresponding impedance response of the driver. The FRD file type consists of sensitivity values with corresponding frequency values for a given driver. It is essentially a long list of numbers. The ZMA file is the same thing, but it consists of the impedance of the driver. There are many ways to obtain the ZMA and FRD information for a given driver. One is if the manufacturer provides it. Two is to use specialized equipment to record the frequency response of a driver as well as the ZMA information. Three is to trace it with a program. Four is to manually trace it and enter the values into a spreadsheet. As far as companies that provide it regularly, Dayton Audio is uh, one company that has uh, ZMA and FRD information for all their drivers, and they also include the off-axis ones as well. This can be very handy. Even possible to send a manufacturer an email and asking if they have it. A lot of times they'll get back to you and give you the file. Manually recording the FRD and ZMA can be tricky. Uh, tools needed to measure the impedance during a sweep as well as a calibrated microphone. And the recording room needs to be well treated for a high degree of accuracy. It's for this reason I don't really recommend doing this. For a small production, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. It would, however, be handy to do this in that one could match drivers and measure the manufacturer tolerance of a given driver and fully customize to the nth degree for perfection. If I cannot find the FRD or ZMA for a given driver, this is the program I like to use. Vidix CAD? Something like that. I'm unsure of how it's actually pronounced. But this program can actually do full speaker design, but a lot of it is overly complicated. So I mainly just use it for the extraction of FRD and ZMA files. I used to have another program that I used, but it no longer works on Windows 10. This is a good program to use for doing your crossover design, but it's not very entry level friendly. And I think it would be better to learn on WinPCD and then maybe move over to this program down the road because WinPCD does a lot of design things for you that this one you have to do manually. The download link for the program is at the bottom and the portion we're actually going to be using is called SPL Trace. So download the program and install it. For some reason they selected an icon that almost looks like the Superman symbol. Or at least it does to me. Either way, open it up once it's done installing. So the tool we want is under Tools, and it's SPL Trace. So open that, and there we go. So here we have our woofer again, and this this portion right here, this chart, this is what we want to copy and paste into the program. Well, we can either copy and paste it or save it as an image and then open the image to import it. I like to do the copy and paste method. Snipping tools is a, well, it comes with windows and if we open it, that lets us take screenshots. So then we can have our picture up here. We do new and we're golden. And then we can hit our copy button over here, or we can save it. If 
we save it and then we got the image we can just load it up and we'll always have it or we just copy it to the clipboard and then we can minimize it edit paste image boom okay now we have to move our lines so they line up with the chart and then we'll have to enter in the values of the uh, endpoints and 10 db 50 db 20 hertz let's do 10 hertz and Forty kilohertz, and as far as the impedance goes here, I'm gonna actually drag the lines to line up with the values that I can actually see because I don't know what that is and I don't know what that is. One twenty-eight and four. And then it wants the RE of the driver. So if we open up our chart here, RE, DC resistance, 5.6 ohms, 5.6. Now if we look over here, we got our frequency and sensitivity as well as the impedance. So if we drag to a, or move our mouse to a zone, we can kind of see what it is. Let's see here, 64 ohms. Where's that about there? Well, that's definitely not 64 ohms, and that's because this is a logarithmic scale. So we adjust that. Here, where are we? That's much closer. Let's see, eight ohms. A lot closer now it'll be closer well because it's a logarithmic scale it'll be closer in lower values than it will be on higher ones and here 100 ohms 90 90 99.7 that's bang on so now we can do the actual tracing so select our trace button and we'll click on the line then we keep clicking on the line to ensure that the red, it's all red. And there we go. We're going from one side right to the other. Like it's deviating too much. There we go. Then we hit our export. And we will go to FRD and S263 SWR3908. Sure. And now we we'll do the same thing for the Z. This is a lot more frustrating because the line is the same color as the grid. But you just take your time and eventually it'll go. There we go. Export. S263 SWR3908. This time it's a ZMA file. And then it pops up with this to kind of confirm to make sure you actually had it set right because the logarithmic linear thing can throw off a lot of charts. Look at our 1K. 13 ohms. Well, it's less than 16. Oh. There, 10k 58. 
There's our 64 there, so 58 probably. Good. Now this thing has some other features as well. It has an eraser, so it's possible to actually erase these lines. That way it doesn't jump all over the place when trying to select. As well as uh, there's an option to actually invert the colors, which a lot of times makes it easier to see. But it's just one of those things. You play with it until you got it good, and, and then you're set. This uh, portion over here where we kind of went over the edge, uh, you can manually edit the file in Excel to get rid of that. Like, well, actually, I guess any spreadsheet program, you can open it and edit it. But generally, that's it doesn't really become an issue in the program because it's, well, in this case, anyway, it's outside the hearing range and shouldn't pose a problem. But if it is posing a problem, the file can be manually edited. And just as an example, here we have the file opened up. This is the FRD in Excel. We have our frequencies and we have our sensitivity levels. You can see all these ones that are kind of the same near the end. All we would do is select those, delete them, and save the file again, and that would uh, truncate the problem. Here, how far did it even go? 20k, I guess. Save. The program does have other options as well, like the amount of points per octave, as well as smoothing, which I usually just leave it on the default setup because it's the most points. And the smoothing helps uh, as far as really jaggly stuff where it doesn't trace very well. It can be turned off. It really depends on what it, uh, what your chart looks like, whether or not you need smoothing or not. So after doing that, repeat the process two more times for the tweeter and the mid-range. Years ago, Jeff Bagby designed the Passive Crossover Designer. It's a uh, Excel sheet that can be used to design the crossovers. It uses the FRD and ZMA files and works quite well on older versions of Excel. On newer versions, it doesn't work as good with all the add-ons required and security permissions and all those other fancy things of Excel. So another fella, David Ralph, designed a Windows application that uses the back end of the Excel sheets. Um, and it is a much easier program to use and runs a lot better on Windows 10 than the old Excel sheets. And here's the web page for that. I'm going to include both these web pages on uh, the description. It's worth reading about the history of this uh, designer because it kind of goes back quite a ways. What we want to do is the uh, download. Here's the instructions on how to download and the links readily available. Open it up and here's what we have. So we have our FRD and ZMA files, so we'll select those for all the drivers that we're going to use. And then we'll set our crossover type. There we go. One of the things I do recommend doing is naming, uh, like putting the name of the type of driver in front of it. It makes it a lot easier when selecting each individual one to have them entered into the program. Now that all the drivers are installed into the program, they're all green, we can select the section here and we got three speakers, so we'll do three way. If you're doing uh, two-way, just select two-way, and then we can hit our graph. This kind of shows us our starting point. We got our woofer, our mid-range, and our tweeter. And the black line is our sum response. Let's hide our raw 
guess if you're not getting anything to show, hit the raw uh, draw driver. But our goal is to make this black line here as flat as possible. And this video is getting kind of long as it is, so that'll actually be in the next section. Till next time, like, comment, and subscribe. Have a nice day.